Stacy Peterson, 23 years old, missing from Illinois, 2007. Washington, D.C., James Lewis, 67 years old. Hey everyone, and in today's video we are going to be taking things into a little bit of a different direction. So we are going to be taking a look at three videos posted by a user named Dateline420. I know the name is extremely silly and a little, a little bit goofy, but uh, for the sake of this video we are going to be calling Dateline Jeremy from this point forward so as not to like ruin the mood later on when we're going through this creepy things, creepy stuff. So Jeremy's channel is mostly dedicated to everyday things that this person encounters on their hikes through a park in Suffolk County, located in the state of New York. And Jeremy's first video was posted back on June 27th, 2008. And then eight years later, on October 3rd, 2016, Jeremy would upload the first video in a series of three videos documenting footage in a certain part of the woods that they had never been in before. And from all these three videos, they were all recorded in the same month, October of 2016. The first video was filmed on the 3rd, and the last video was filmed on the 30th, one day before Halloween. And within these videos, as I said before, Jeremy is going into a part of the woods that he has never been before. Although he has said that he has had many adventures going through this weird, massive part of the woods, but has never been to this specific part yet. And what Jeremy finds is extremely unsettling and something that he felt that he had to document. And even going as far as to say that the only reason that he uploaded these videos was to make sure that he made it out alive. And if he didn't, these videos would be up to serve as evidence if he was ever kidnapped or even killed exploring this part of the woods. So this video served as kind of like a Hail Mary in case everything went wrong. And within the first entry in the trilogy of videos documenting Jeremy's ventures, Jeremy states that they've been doing some off-trailing in the woods. And that's when they come across this part of the woods, which is extremely unsettling. But I came to a trail that led to a trail that led to a trail up the hill. And I came down this, and as you can see, probably can see, it's fucking blocked. There's trees knocked over, blocking it and cut down so that it's hard to get down the hill. But I saw what looked like a fire pit. And for those of you who do have some experience doing some hiking in the woods, I have some as well. It's pretty cool, right? But yeah, unless you know the layout of the park, like your life depends on it, or you have a map that shows you exactly where you are, you should probably never go off trailing because it's so easy to get lost. Literally everything looks the same and you could be going in circles for hours. Like you guys have seen The Blair Witch or 127 Hours, you know. Both of these movies have made me extremely scared of going off trailing in woods, especially alone because you're alone and there's nobody to help you. Like if it is a small park and you do some off trailing, I guess that's okay, but there's also ticks everywhere. There's like a tick infestation everywhere. I had a tick on my body the other day and it was horrible. And now I'm scared I have Lyme disease. Jeremy is completely alone, wandering through these woods. But lucky for Jeremy, they've been to these woods hundreds of times over the years. However, the park is so massive that they have yet to discover every nook and cranny of these woods. And that's when Jeremy does discover a fire pit in the woods. And being the very sociable person that they are, they decide to see if there's any people by it so he can go say hi to them. But I saw what looked like a fire pit. And since I've already found one back the way I came, and it was just made by neighborhood kids, and when I was there, I met one of the kids that rides a dirt bike in here, and he was probably like in his 20s. I don't know if he was like a kid, but the point is I thought this might be something similar. Also mentioning that he was just at another fire pit a little bit ago and was just hanging out with some people beforehand. So seeing this other fire pit, he thought he could do the same thing. If there was any people nearby, he could hang out with them or just say a simple hello. But as soon as Jeremy goes into this part of the woods where the fire pit is, they discover that they're surrounded by hills, and the part they're in is a dip in the woods. So Jeremy finds themselves completely surrounded by hills. Furthermore stating that tactically speaking, this is the equivalent of being a sitting duck, because people could be hiding on these hills, able to shoot at you without you being able to see them. You know, being in the center of a bunch of hills, is tactically disadvantageous because people can hide on the tops and throw things or shoot at you. And after stumbling into essentially what is a pit in the woods, 
Jeremy takes a look around, only to discover missing posters taped to trees all over this pit in the woods. Jeremy goes on to say that they are extremely unsettled and think that they may even die. With hills surrounding them, missing posters taped all over, and only a knife to defend themselves with, in Jeremy's mind, they've stumbled upon a death trap. And in the description of the video, Jeremy even states that, quote, I discovered this while hiking and wanted to put out a distress call of sorts on my social media in case this was the real deal and something happened to me. Friends of mine were able to follow my posts until I let them know that I was safely out of the woods. The first missing poster is of a person named Jennifer Kessie, age 24, last seen January 24th, 2006, Orlando, Florida. Description, 5 foot 8, shoulder length, sand, blonde hair, green eyes. And at the bottom of the poster there is a link to a website that if we type up, this appears. Upon clicking the link, it directs us to the official website of the missing woman. Jennifer Cassie has been missing as of today for 16 years, gone without a trace. The only piece of evidence that police have is this tape showcasing a person of interest, the person believed responsible for Jennifer's abduction. And Jeremy continues traversing this extremely disturbing part of the woods and documents yet again another poster. This time of a person named Brenda Heist, 42 years old, 5 foot 8, dark brown hair, brown eyes. And as for Brenda Heist, they were last seen February 8th, 2002, in Littitz, Pennsylvania, with a description that does read the following. On February 8th, 2002, Brenda Heist took her children to school. Her car was last seen by neighbors parked in front of her Lidditz home around 8.30 that morning. When her children returned home from school that afternoon, they found the house empty. Brenda's car was gone from the driveway and there was no signs of a struggle. Four days after she disappeared, Brenda's company car, a white 1998 Mercury Mystique, was found legally parked in a parking spot in the 100th block of North George Street. The keys were not in the car and there was no damage or any indication that there was something wrong with the car, and she was legally declared dead in 2008, seven years after she went missing. Her case remains unsolved. And what's very interesting about this missing person is that in 2013, Brenda Heist actually did reappear and was located in Florida. And from this reappearance of Brenda Heist in 2013, it proves that the person that displayed these missing posters all over the woods is most likely putting up these posters as a way to deter people from going onto their property. But even if that is the case, it does make you think that there's something more sinister going on behind the scenes. And it does make you think as to what drives a person to even put up missing posters all over their property just as a way to drive people away. It makes you question what else lies within the home. What more sinister things could be held within that home inside the woods? Jeremy begins to panic the longer that they stay in this part of the woods, and from the looks of it, it appears that there has to be at least 20 missing posters in these woods, all strung up upon trees. Missing poster after missing poster fills the woods. Jeremy then points out how every missing poster that's taped on a tree looks like it's been sitting there for years, with the way the tape looks and the water damage on each of the posters. And within the description of the video, Jeremy does state the following. Local law enforcement subsequently investigated and were apparently told by residents of the adjacent property that the missing person's posters are being used as decorations for their upcoming Halloween party. The police then accepted that explanation and have announced that they will not be pursuing the matter. Occupants of the house have said the posters will be removed, but I have not yet been able to verify this. The reason the homeowners gave is that they wanted to put up these posters for a Halloween party, although that doesn't seem like a very valid reason to put up missing posters of people that are actually still missing, with the exception of Brenda Heist. I don't know, it seems like kind of a very out of the whim excuse for the reason these posters have been hung on trees for what looks like years. And even if there were a Halloween party, it would be extremely upsetting to hang these missing posters of people who have actually gone missing for 
decorations. Nonetheless, I still don't think that these missing posters were hung up for Halloween decorations. And although this was recorded in October, I think it might just be a coincidence. I didn't realize that everybody here dresses up every year. Me neither. It's Halloween. That is really, really good timing. The fact that these posters look like they've been strung up for years begs to differ that these are just Halloween decorations. And if these were just Halloween decorations, why put up so many? To the fact that if these were just decorations, it might be a bit of overkill. Roger Dan Shekels Jr. Our family lost touch with Roger more than three years ago. The officer located a person Roger had done business with, and the person said as of early 2009, Roger was still living in Burbank, but assumed to be homeless. The amount of missing posters hung up is disturbing, to say the least. And the longer Jeremy stays in the woods, the more they find. And Jeremy even goes on to mention that there's so much twigs and branches that it took a lot of persistence to even hang up these things. They had to walk through all this tough terrain with thorns, sharp twigs, and all to just hang up some missing posters for again a Halloween party that may not even have happened. And that's when Jeremy notices a drop light on one of the branches hanging from a tree. Look over there. See that shit? The orange thing on the tree. It's a drop light. And just so you have a visual, because I forgot what a drop light looks like, it kind of looks like this. It's like one of those construction lights that they used to work during the night. But this does mean that whoever is living in that property comes out here with the missing posters at night, with the light hanging so they can see where they are. But why come out here at night is the question, and I don't think they're hanging up these missing posters in the middle of the night, and if they are, that makes it even more unsettling. And as Jeremy gets closer to the property, they notice this little bundle of sticks on the ground, saying that it could be some kind of a cage, the way the sticks are tied together. And upon looking over at the fire pit, we can see a shovel as well. And that's when a sense of even more panic starts as Jeremy starts to put everything together. Missing posters surrounding them in a valley, a cage made out of sticks, and a shovel not too far away. And upon closer inspection, inside of the cage there is a hole in the middle, although it's been filled in with leaves to disguise it. And this, this part right in the middle, it's a hole. It's a filled in hole, but it's a hole. But whatever it was, it was intricate. And it clearly took a lot of time to make. And right as Jeremy begins to inspect the hole inside of the cage, Jeremy hears voices coming from within the property and runs out of the valley as quick as they can. Oh shit, I heard voices. We have to get the fuck out of here. Jeremy makes it out, thankfully, and leaves the woods for good. And when I mean for good, I mean until their curiosity gets the better of them. So just imagine yourself in that position for a sec, uh, surrounded by missing posters, uh, and then you see a cage that could potentially even hold a human. And then you see a shovel a little further down. How long would it take you to go back to that 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 horrible place? You, you probably would never go back. I, I would never go back. But if you just absolutely had to go back, how long would it take you? Maybe a month. A month. I think that seems about right. Well, Jeremy went back the exact same day. Literally an hour and a half later, Jeremy was back at the property. Now, I guess to be fair, they kind of did go back for a, like, a slightly good reason. In the description of the video, Jeremy states, After wandering around the forest for an hour or so, hoping to elude whatever crazed maniac might or might not have been looking for me, I returned to the location for the sole purpose of saving a geotag on Google Maps and possibly taking a piece of evidence to show law enforcement. So this is actually a very good reason, although I am in no way brave enough to do that. Jeremy makes it back to the location and reveals the address of the property with the missing posters. And upon searching up the address, the location of the property appears. And if we look at the map, this is where the street view of the house is, and we can see that there is an actual house in the front, meaning that everything Jeremy saw resides in the back of the house roughly around this area. And we can see the trail where Jeremy came off of right here. And so Jeremy makes their way back into the area. The shovel is still there. And Jeremy uncovers a few more missing posters that we didn't see in the previous footage. James Lewis, 67 years old, 
last seen 2006, Washington, D.C. And after wandering around for a bit longer, we get a look at the sheer amount of missing posters taped to the trees. And that's when Jeremy takes one of the missing posters and leaves the scene in hopes that whoever hung this up left fingerprints on it for authorities to analyze. Jeremy leaves the scene and the video ends there, with Jeremy making their way back to their car. And as mentioned earlier, Jeremy did end up taking this missing poster to the authorities and told their story about their encounter with the property and about all the weird stuff that they found in the backyard of this house. An officer was dispatched to the property, however, the owner simply told the officer that it was Halloween decorations as it was October, as we talked about earlier. So there wasn't really anything the officer could do and they left the scene. However, on October 30th, a day before Halloween, Jeremy posted this. On October 30th, I returned to the park to film a brief and mostly harmless update video for those who have been wondering what's been going on since the events of earlier this month. As my narration attempts to explain, I had previously visited the woods on the preceding Tuesday by myself and been unsuccessfully at taking video. And Wednesday when I and a couple of friends did make a video which was dark and hard to see, not to mention kind of long, longer even than the 12 minute runtime of this one. Recent discoveries include a stash of what appear to be, but might not be, weapons at the other fire pit, as well as some logs laid across one of the trails by persons unknown. Most of the logs had been removed by the time I returned to make this video, but can be seen in the long dark one from Wednesday that I haven't posted yet. As you recall from earlier this month, the missing persons posters had been explained away as being decorations for a Halloween party, which was said to have either taken place back in August or set to be held at the end of October. Based on casual observations on the Friday and Saturday nights of Halloween weekend, no parties were seen to have been held at the location. However, people identifying as party guests have said on Facebook that a small gathering with pizza and beer took place at some point this past weekend. I'm not here to judge or to declare conclusivity of what happened. I'm just being the eyes and ears of the greater population. Sift through the evidence and decide for yourself. So the whole excuse that these missing posters are just there for Halloween decorations becomes increasingly more suspicious, and it is highly unlikely that that is why this person hung up these posters, considering there was no party. And considering October 31st of 2016 landed on a Monday, the party should have been held on a Saturday or Sunday. I don't really think people are hosting Halloween parties on a Monday, but apparently there was some kind of a small gathering with pizza and beers on October 31st. But going back to the description, it does say, people identifying themselves as party guests have said on Facebook that a small gathering with pizza and beer took place at some point this past weekend, meaning it didn't happen on October 30th or the 29th, which was Halloween weekend but Jeremy was there observing the house and saw nothing. And the people identifying themselves as party guests could have just been fake profiles created to deter suspicion. And within the video, Jeremy addresses people saying that his videos are fake and then goes on to say that they are not doing this for attention or to stir things up, but more so as a way to bring awareness of the place for people's safety because there are people who go on jogs almost right next to that property. Jeremy goes deeper into the woods and shows viewers a fireplace in the middle of a public park trail, and that there is also a baseball bat and a golf club next to it. But Jeremy tosses them aside into shrubbery in case they were being used as weapons to hurt people. See, these were over at the fire pit. I moved them here because this shit just seems like if it's here, it's here for no good. And in the interest of personal safety, I, I tossed them in the bushes like that because I thought there was a chance they might be, you know, weapons. And that's maybe not what they're for, but if it is, I figured throwing them like that would at least buy me a little bit of time in case something happened. But, you know, that's, that's really not going to do anything at all, honestly. But uh, it freaked me the fuck out because... I just can't think of any scenario why why there would be a golf club and a baseball bat in the woods. Uh, you know, unless they're here for, for something bad. Jeremy then goes on to say that there were logs placed in the way of a path 
that leads to the property. Within like the past couple of weeks, somebody had laid down logs across the, uh, the trail. And in the time it took them to realize how weird this was that somebody had blocked a public path that somewhat kind of leads to the property, it makes you realize that it was most likely the owner of the house that did this. After getting a visit from local authorities, they most likely put two and two together and realized, hey, somebody knows about the missing posters, so now I'm gonna try to make sure nobody ever crosses onto my property again. And then Jeremy talks about how a few days ago they were at the blocked off path, and after staring at the blocked off path, Jeremy started to notice a person standing in the direction of the property, but was unsure if they were looking at him. I happened to look up and I saw somebody standing in the bushes, so I, I turned around and I left. Well, I happened to turn around back to look after a bit, and I saw that they were following me, or they were running in my direction. So Jeremy starts to walk away from the blocked off path, but notices that the person starts jogging towards them. And so, as we would all do in this situation, Jeremy starts sprinting towards their car. As far as the guy that chased me out of the woods, this, this kid came running up from the far end of the parking lot while I was sitting in my car, catching my breath. And uh, he, was, he was dressed in all black. And it was this young, like, college age. And he was driving. So I stopped him and I said, yo, was that you in the woods just now? Were you, like, running? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I was in there. No one was chasing Jeremy. And here it becomes apparent of the effects that this location has had on Jeremy already making them extremely paranoid of every little thing that they find in the woods now, believing they're being chased when in reality it was just a jogger, finding a baseball bat and a golf club, believing their weapons from people wanting to inflict harm onto others, being freaked out by blocked off paths, when in reality maybe a ranger put them up to deter bikers from going in this direction. What's really interesting about these three videos is that you can look at it from a lot of different angles, is Jeremy simply being paranoid? And maybe these missing posters were really just a insensitive set of Halloween decorations. Maybe this cage was used to hold livestock such as pigs or chickens, not a cage designed for a human. And the shovel, I mean, most people have a shovel in their backyard. Even in this final video, Jeremy doesn't even go close to the property claiming that they don't want to get hurt. I'm not going down there for a variety of reasons. Personal protection obviously being the number one reason, but I don't want to get hurt. The effect of this property has burrowed its way into Jeremy's head, creating a sense of paranoia when it comes to it. No trespassing signs have been put up, and to this day it is still unknown whether the missing posters are still up there. Maybe there really was something sinister happening within that tent, within that property, and now I guess we'll never really know. But yeah, that pretty much concludes this three-part video documentation of this extremely unsettling property within the woods. But yeah, I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. Do you guys really think that these are just Halloween decorations, or do you think there's something else going on within that property? Personally, I'd like to believe that there's something even more creepy going on within that tent, within that property, but, but I don't know, maybe it just was insensitive Halloween decorations. That, that'd be kind of lame, though. But yes, my name is Wildman. Don't forget to subscribe if you like creepy videos like this. But yes, huge shout out to all my beautiful Patreons, Brian, Harlow, Estenia, Bleh, and 10 Tiny Bees. Thank you so much for helping me to continue creating videos. You are so awesome. And if you'd like to support the channel as well, it would mean the world. I have my Patreon linked in the description. But yeah, that's everything. I love you guys. We just hit 50,000. That is so awesome. And it was just so great spending some time with you. Thank you for spending some time with me. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.